Hi, I'm Stefan, the BMW DIY guy. Do you want to add CarPlay or Android Auto to your BMW? I'll show you how. All right, y'all, so let's talk about this project a little bit before we do it and the reasons why you might want to do this. Now, there are a lot of great options out there for adding technology to your car, and the BimmerTech MMI is a great way to do it. Now, a lot of folks really depend on Android Auto or Apple CarPlay in their cars as a great way to integrate that familiar technology and be able to use it while on your drive. Now, BMWs come with lots of different options, but a lot of the time they, they may not have the options we wanted or didn't have them available at the time that we bought the car. This is a great way to retrofit in some of that technology and have it really be part of your daily drive, which is a great thing. And this is a very easy way to do it. This is all plug and play. I'm gonna walk you through the entire process. So even if you had, say for example, a leased car and you didn't have that technology that you wanted, this would be a great way to add that in after the fact. It's not gonna affect your warranty in any way. And then if, even if you were gonna turn your leased car back in, you just take it back out. It's that simple. So this is great for no matter what your car is, and we're gonna show this on a BMW X1 today. Now there were a ton of options available on the X1 uh, as they, they've come out through the years. This particular car has the base model display and the base model technology in it, so it's missing some of those things that you might wanna have, and the MMI is a great way to add it. So let's jump into the car and I'm gonna show you how you could do this yourself. All right y'all, so here we are in the car. And whenever you do work like this, especially on the interior, you want to be very, very careful. Um, I have linked in the description a plastic trim tool set uh, that you want to use. You really don't want to use metal because you're going to scar up the plastic, scar up your dash. That would be bad. Okay. Now, the central display piece right here, this is what we're going to want to very carefully pull out. It's on a series of posts all the way around. And you really want to be careful about this. So I took my plastic trim tool. I've worked it under an edge right here. And I've just very slowly started to pull it free. I've also worked my fingers under this bottom edge now that we have a little bit of a gap here. It's almost impossible to show, but I can get my fingers here in the bottom edge. You can see that this trim piece is starting to give way, just like that. So as we pull all of this out, it's probably never been off before. So be very, very careful. And there you go. You can see there's your head unit. Now this is gonna be, an e should be an easy install to get the MMI in here. You're gonna wanna go ahead and unplug your dash or your controls here. It's impossible probably to see on camera, but there's a little clip with squeeze fingers on either side. You wanna pull on that and then work that out. You also have two plugs down here down below that you could potentially leave plugged in just as long as you can set it out of the way. Okay, so once that's out of the way, you're gonna see you're gonna have two T20 screws right here and right here. So go ahead and pull both of those and then your head unit will start to slide out. So let me get that out and I'm gonna show you what the back of the head unit looks like and start to, to place our cabling for the MMI. All right, so what I really like about this install is there is a lot of space underneath this head unit and it's really gonna depend on which model that you have. So if you have the uh, wider screen, the 10 and a quarter inch screen and the bigger head unit, that head unit's gonna take up this whole space, right? So this empty space here that's gonna be so convenient for us uh, is gonna be, gonna be filled with a larger head unit. Now I've taken out both T20s and you can see the head unit is loose. Now, before we pull that out, and like I said, here is the MMI itself. You can see what this looks like. This is gonna be an easy install with all the different cables across the back. Now, one of the things we're gonna to have to do is you pull all the cables out. We're gonna to have to run a new video cable up to the display. The existing one comes down and runs to the back of the head unit. That's gonna to need to come off and plug into this, and then the cable from this will run back up to the display. And that's what helps carry all of the additional information uh, and the uh, Android Auto, the, the MMI side of the technology, okay? so. One of the things you're gonna to need to do is to go ahead and take your trim off. Be very careful with this. As you can see, it's got some give to it now. Now, again, it's probably never been off before depending on you know, the installation of your car. So that can mean that this is very stiff and it's on a series of just pressing clips all the way across the back. So if you grab this and just yank, you can break it, which would be a real dragon for such a simple install. But you can also see there's little post holes here underneath that this trim couldn't come off until this center dash came off. So as you look at this, as you start to pull on this, be very gentle as you pull. So I'm gonna get my fingers underneath and I'm gonna just kind of slowly work it out of the vents. 
just like that, okay? And it goes all the way across. The far edge is probably off camera right at the moment, but I'm just gonna slowly work my fingers underneath this, work it, work it, work it, work it, work it, until it comes all the way off the other side, okay? So I'm gonna open the door on the other side because it's in the way a little bit. I'm gonna open the door, then we'll have this off. You will have one cable that comes up to your controls right here, so go ahead and unplug this switch, and then go ahead and take this and set it aside. All right, so once you have that trim off, and if you work it from this side, you can kind of bow it out, but be careful as you go down the line and then pull it out evenly. It's probably off camera right now. Let's see if I can get it in camera. This is a connection for the uh, LED light track that runs underneath. These uh, notoriously are pretty fragile. So as you pull this out, don't pull it away really far because you could potentially snap it off in your trim piece and that would be a bummer. But it's a really easy unplug here. This is that central button here. Everything's unplugged. So now, at this point, you can see that there's two T20s here and here on the display itself. So you're going to want to pull both of those, which I haven't done yet, and then you just work the display up and you'll be able to turn it around and see the cabling on the back. Now, it's kind of an interesting plug uh, that you're looking at on the back. It's going to be very, very similar to this. As you can see, it'll have a little depression tab on it right here that you press on when you pull it out. Now, it can be difficult. These are notoriously tight uh, in the back of the display. So um, I have taken a plastic trim tool. So if this is the bottom edge of this, the display. I've taken a plastic trim tool in. I've depressed the tab and I just very gently kind of pry away to get this plug to come out. Okay, so it can be very, very tight. So go ahead and take those two T20s out. Now, if you haven't taken your head unit out yet, you can start to slide this out. It's gonna be really hard to, to show in place right at the moment because the cabling is so tight. But there is a horseshoe collar right here on the back and I'll show it in a second. So I'm taking the little collar and I'm depressing it back in a way like that. And then you've got this big, huge monster plug that comes off the back. And probably, I'm, I'm sure my shoulder's in the way right now or my arm's in the way, but very, very tight. Now, the other thing you're gonna have is all the rest of your feed cables up here are also extremely tight. So what you may end up wanting to do is go ahead and pull this trim piece and pull it out of the way. You've got two plugs. You've got one here and one down here in the bottom you're gonna wanna pull. Then you can set this aside. Then you're, you're gonna get a little bit more room to, to work here and this will be out of the way. Okay, so go ahead and get caught up there, take those screws out, unplug your head unit, go ahead and remove the trim piece, and then we're gonna start running the new cabling. All right, y'all, so let me give you a little bit of a better camera angle here for a second. So here's the cable I was talking about. I've already got it partially pulled out, and these are really stiff, and I really wanna stress how stiff these can be. You wanna make sure to really strongly depress that tab because it's got a little locking notch right there that connects into the plug, and then just pry downward on it. And you can see even now with it three quarters of the way out, it was pretty stiff to come out. Okay, so now you can take this, feed it down. You can see where the cable is here in between the vents. Feed it down all the way back here. And you just pull that cable out, okay? So once that's done, you can take and you can feed the new cable in. The, uh, the right angle uh, plug, just matching, is going to be the one that you feed up through the same path as the previous cable. Go ahead and plug it in the display. At that point, you can turn the display around and go ahead and put the T20s back in because you're done with this portion. Then at that point, we're going to plug everything into the uh, MMI, the MMI into the head unit. But let's go ahead and get your cable run, and then we're going to be plugging in the MMI along with its big cable back here in just a second. All right, so some of this is gonna be easier to show on the cable that you're going to add than the back of the head unit right at the moment. Now, if you have this base model with the smaller head unit, we're gonna install the MMI under it. So we're gonna run all the cables down and under the head unit, actually once we have it back into place. But let's describe this here first. So this is actually what the back of the cable on the back of your head unit looks like. This is, like I said, it's got this horse collar that you pull down and you pulled it out. Now, that original wiring harness cables, which you're gonna plug in to this end right here. That whole thing is gonna plug in right here. The rest of this, this is gonna plug into the MMI, and this is gonna plug into the back of your head unit. This is what allows this whole system to chain in together and feed through your existing speakers and your existing system, right? But it's kind of hard to see this plug here in the back. Now, the one other thing you're gonna to wanna to check for, and again, it's gonna depend on your particular model of car. Now, in this case, it's gonna be really hard to see, but I'm gonna show you something that's not there. <laughs> so you would have out of the wiring harness into this slot right here, two cables, they're called the optical cables. It's this green corrugated cabling and a black corrugated cabling into a plug that's right here. Now, this particular car doesn't have them, right? So 
this optical cable, because what you'd normally have to do is transfer the optical cable from that plug into this plug into the same position right here, the same position on the new one, because the optical cable doesn't have a pass through. It doesn't have cabling that passes through either end of this. So you would take the existing cable, plug it into this new plug, and then this is what plugs into the back of your head unit, right? So, and I've, I've shown that in a bunch of my other videos, this particular car doesn't have that, right? So it doesn't have the optical cable, you don't have to transfer it. But I just wanna make sure to point it out that if you do, like I did in my F32 and a number of the other installs that I've done, you wanna transfer that optical cable. There's a little locking plate right here. You would lift that little locking plate. You'd pull the cable out. You'd slide this back in the back. You'd plug it into here. And then this plugs into the back of your head unit once you lock that, that horse collar up into place. I know I'm talking kind of, you know, trying to give you the example of what this looks like while we do it. But I just don't want you to miss that because if you don't transfer the optical cable, some of your features aren't going to work quite right. Okay, so now we've got, this is the new cable. You can tell because it's blue. We're actually going to run that down and underneath the head unit because we're gonna run everything under the head unit since we have so much extra space in this case, right? So make sure your other cables don't get trapped in a way. Now here is the original cable that was plugged into the display. This guy, you're gonna wanna take, and you're gonna see exactly where it plugs in right here. So this is LCD in, because this is the LCD from the head unit into the MMI, because it's a pass-through, right? The MMI is adding technology to this whole setup. So you're gonna take that and press that into the LCD in, right there. And then you're going to take your new cable here. This is the new blue one that you installed. This is the LCD out. This is going to go out to the display like that. Okay. So now I'm going to take this, I'm going to tuck this down and underneath, but before we do that, we can probably plug in a fair amount of all of our cabling, right? The only things that really matter left at this point is this blue cable. This is your antenna. You're going to want to take this as it has adhesive off the back, so go ahead and peel off the backing. And you can stick it just about anywhere that fits where it's not going to get in the way. I usually will go down in the back. There's some metal piping back here in the back. I'll stick that on, undo the twist tie, and then go ahead and plug that in to this connection right here. And this plug only goes in one way, just like that. Okay? Now, lastly, the only thing that makes this even vaguely hard at all for an install is getting all of this to fit back into the same space that you had before because when bmw designed this dash they didn't plan on you adding anything now this is where i mentioned before if you have this if you have the base model and you have the smaller head unit you have so much more space now the head unit's not straight right now but that's okay um, there's all this space underneath and that's where i'm going to slide this down and under to be underneath the head unit right here. I've already measured, there's lots of space. This will fit in perfectly, okay? So go ahead and just get, get caught up. So take your original cable right here. Like I said, here is what was plugged into the back of your head unit. You're gonna wanna take your big plug, go ahead and plug it in in the correct orientation, plug that in, take this, plug that into the MMI, feed all that down in, and then plug this in the back of your head unit, and it's gonna be just sliding it all back into place. Okay, so let me, let me get part of that done and then I'll walk you through the rest. All right, so as you look at the MMI, there's actually one cable I don't want to leave off, right? And this is really going to depend on what you want to do. So this is essentially your accessories cable. So this is a USB port right here, and you can use this to uh, add media and play media through the MMI, but the rest are actually for front and rear cameras. Now, it is possible to get the MMI with the, with the rear camera. I highly suggest it if your car doesn't have that. You can add this in really easily. So these are the video feeds for a front and rear camera including power now in this case uh, we're not using it but um, I'm gonna want to go ahead and keep that USB port um, as something available that that we can use it if we want to now this only plugs in in one place I'm also gonna keep the cabling really really tight because like I said most of this I'm not going to use all of these cables all go into one place I'm going to go ahead and take the USB cable and I'm gonna run it off and you have a lot of choices here of where you can potentially run it and this is why I'm gonna really leave it up to you sometimes I fed it through and I fed it down into the glove box which I've done before in multiple cars on some where you can't get cleanly into the glove box. I've run it down and out the side of the trim here at the bottom. Now the X1 is not necessarily a good option for that because you have the sides of your transmission tunnel here. The trim is hard plastic all the way down to the floor. So I'm not sure I want this out on the floor. 
So um, I'm going to get my antenna set in the right correct, correct position, but this it really is going to be up to you. If you're not running a backup cameras, if you don't care about the USB port, you don't even necessarily need to plug this in and you could just not plug it in at all. Um, it's not a big deal. So I'll leave that up to you. Now, now that this is starting to be all plugged in together, as you can see, I've got the back cable in, I've got this is that's gonna go into the back of the head unit, and then this is the power run and everything that powers up the MMI. This I'm gonna run down behind the head unit and out through this gap underneath, and I'm gonna slot the MMI down underneath that. So let me show you what that looks like when it's done. And we're, and we're pretty close to being done. All right, so in this particular car, actually one of the hardest things to do out of this whole thing is sometimes getting, like I said, is getting the head unit back into place. But that big new cable with those big monster plugs that you put on either side, pull it down and it tucks in perfectly all the way down in the back. And as you can see, the head unit is, just slides right back into its place over these two posts and you can put in the T20s. Here's the MMI. I'm gonna slide it here underneath the head unit in a good secure location with all my cables in place, which you can see I've run underneath the head unit. But this is also a perfect time to test everything. There's nothing in here, that, you know, there's no reason why you can't, you can't run your car uh, with it still in, in a position like this where it's still pulled apart a little bit. It's not gonna hurt anything. The rest of the things that you have unplugged, make sure that you didn't trap any of your wires back behind, right? So these are the wires for your cen center dash right here. Uh, this is for um, uh, your buttons and everything else. Make sure that they're, you know, they're free in all of your running cables that they didn't get trapped back. Because I've certainly done that before. I've run the head unit in and been like, oh no, where did these cables go? Okay, but if you turn on your system, you can see that you can actually see that this is a perfect time to test. So as this comes back up. And I'll do a brief walkthrough of the technology once it's up and running, okay? But, so here's your main normal iDrive display. I'm sure that the iDrive controller is off frame right now. But if you press and hold menu, as you can see, it flips over to the MMI and it's working beautifully. So your iDrive controller still works, as you can see as it's scrolling through the options. And I'll grab my camera and I'll, 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 I'll get it a little bit closer here in just a second. We can do a full review of what, this, uh, what the features do um, another time. This is all about getting this installed. But this is a great way, you can see iOS, you can see Android, the USB connection that I mentioned. You can mirror your phone exactly and then this is how you actually get into settings to set up your connections, your display, if you had uh, you know, a backup camera, all of the rest of that, that's how all of that works. And then if you wanna go back to, the, to your normal iDrive, you press and hold back and it will go right back to your normal settings just like that. Okay, so as you can tell, the whole system's up and running, which is great. So now I'll go ahead and put everything back together. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna slide it underneath the head unit. I'm gonna put my two T20s in. If you haven't put the T20s in on your display, go ahead and put those back in right now. And then your central trim here, Make sure to plug everything back in. You'll plug this back in. You'll plug in your LED down at the far side. And then when you press this, and I'll show you this in a second, but you're just gonna press it gently and rock it gently back into place to get your vents in and then your central trim, okay? But go ahead and get your MMI in, put your screws in, and then we're gonna put the trim back on. All right, so as you can tell, I've got the central trim reinstalled. Make sure to plug in your fiber optics here underneath uh, for your lighting. Make sure to plug your, your switch back in. You can always test it. Now, this trim is really stiff. I mean, it is very, very stiff. So when you press this back in, don't bang on it. Just press it in evenly because all those posts will go in on those little expanding brackets and you just press it back into place to make sure once it's in flush and secure, okay? Because also keep in mind that your central trim here goes to these posts, so they need to be make sure that everything is in the right place. Don't get your cables trapped back behind, like I mentioned before. So here's this, and here's our, here's our two from underneath. So we're gonna to wanna to take both of those, plug in the two bottom ones uh, first, back in the original positions, tip this back up into place, plug this in to the central position, and then once this is set into place, again, you're just gonna walk it back into place on those posts and just press it back in. I don't have my cables on yet, so I'm not gonna press it back into place, but it really is that simple. So just press it all back into place, and then you can test one more time, and you're done. All right, y'all, so go ahead and clean up and put your tools away, and, and you can tell this is not a hard project to do whatsoever. Everything you need will be listed in the video description below, including the link to the MMI itself. I really appreciate Bimmertech making such an easy product to work with, and the install couldn't be simpler. It's something I highly encourage you to do.
I appreciate you watching. Please make sure to click like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference to my channel, and I have a ton of content coming out that I cannot wait to share, share with you. I'll see you on my next video.